We gather today because the bell has tolled. Death in its untimely way has come to dwell among us. We gather to put our arms around one another and especially this family and to say that you matter to us. 
your grief has touched our hearts and our lives. And we are sad not only for ourselves, but especially for you. We gather with broken hearts to do our grief work to the end that we might discover both some comfort and courage. We are also here today to celebrate the life of Eric Biscup, to remember the life that he lived and to hold it before us today as one utterly unique and significant human life. We are gathered also to worship the living God, the one who is the Lord of life and death, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Almighty Father, we stand before the mysteries of life and death. Help us to do it with dignity and with honesty. We celebrate the gift of life. Help us to be grateful. We wait to hear from you, O oh God. Help us to receive your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this afternoon is from Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At this point, we will have the changing out of the honor guard. If you would please stand in honor of the gospel reading for this afternoon. The gospel according to St. John. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show them myself. All this I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Please be seated. Our hymn is hymn number 427. Be not afraid.
Good afternoon. <laughs> it's almost like Sunday morning, isn't it? Well, you're probably wondering, this is a little strange. We're here at St. Mary's, and here I am, and Father Baker's over there. But I just want to say that we are so grateful to Father Baker and St. Mary's for opening up their, their home, their church, so that we can have Eric's celebration of life here. I hear it's kind of a first, so uh, it kind of keeps in with Eric. There's a lot of firsts with Eric. Now, I want you to know that my remarks are short because Eric told me all the things that I could not say. There were many. I wasn't allowed to recant many stories or, or, or much of anything because he didn't think I should say those in church. I thought they'd be the great, a wonderful place to say them. So Eric has limited me in my time and my remarks. But nonetheless, I've always found a way to work around. I do want to say that the song that was picked, uh, Be Not Afraid, was very special and meaningful. Eric attended uh, my church MCC, and that particular Sunday we were singing that song, and he liked it. He thought it was a little, little slow, didn't have a lot of rhythm and tempo, but he, he kind of liked it. And so I said, well, Eric, maybe we'll sing that song again for you. He says, I'd like that. Those of you who know Eric know he was a cantankerous young man. He had a will to live, he had a tenacious spirit, and he had a big heart. Eric truly was one where wherever his focus was, his energy followed. I will miss him, I will miss the mentor, the field training officer, and the person that would come into my office every so often at night when no one is around and just say all sorts of things that I can't repeat here today. But we heard some of them when we were just there in the living room and um, yes, and everything was flowing. On behalf of the family, I do want to thank all of the people who have made this transition a bit easier. A lot of people came out. A lot of people gave of themselves, especially when it wasn't convenient, to be there, to give rides, to sit there, and to listen to them, and maybe listen to the drums or the guitar, or sometimes even a nightly walk at 12 o'clock in the morning. We were there. So thank you. That is my allotted time that he gave me, I just want you to know. So I, I want to respect that. <laughs> I have more, st I know, I know. Chief Lee, he is going to be delivering the eulogy. In front of the Key West Police Department sits a pedestal and a poem and a Key West Police Officer badge. It reads, behind this badge you will meet strength and truth. Behind this badge you will meet honor and compassion. Behind this badge you will meet mothers, fathers, sisters, and sons. Behind this badge you will meet the men and women of the Key West Police Department. Behind this poem, you will meet its author, Sergeant Eric Biscop. Eric Marion Biscop was born 49 years ago in Chicago. He grew up there in the late he, moved, he grew up there in his late teens, moved to Tucson, Arizona, where his sister lived. After graduating from high school, he joined the United States Army. He honorably served in the Army for a short time and began his career in law enforcement which started with the Satellite Beach Police Department. During his law enforcement career, 
He also served briefly with the New Orleans Police Department and the Sonoma Sheriff's Office in Washington State. But Key West and the Key West Police Department was his pride and joy and he always came back home. And we were lucky and proud to have him. 20 years ago, I was a patrolman working on the second watch or the afternoon watch. At briefing, I was told that I would have a civilian rider with me that day. I wasn't thrilled about it. Most cops get used to being autonomous and alone in their cars. Having to entertain and change our routine isn't comfortable for many of us. I put on my happy face and went out to meet the rider. That is when I met Eric Biscop. He was a police officer with the Satellite Beach, uh, Satellite Beach Police Department who was in Key West because he was interested in moving here and joining our department. As you can imagine, he ended up entertaining me and we instantly made a connection. A connection and friendship that would last 20 years until his untimely death on Saturday, January 9th at 1.40 a.m., the morning where I would see him for the last time on this earth. Sergeant Biscop epitomized what it was to be a community police officer. Whether it was the pride he took in wearing his uniform or his compassion and commitment to professionalism, he always did it well. Eric was the type of officer who didn't like to sit in his car or behind a desk. He liked to be on the beat, engaged with those he protected and served. He was a teacher and mentor to many. Until his death, Eric continued to teach us lessons about life and death. Over the last two years, it has been very difficult for many of us to watch a proud and strong police officer and family man and family member physically and sometimes mentally turn into someone we didn't recognize. But it was Eric's courageous fight and determination that would always remind us of the special person he was. Throughout Eric's battle with cancer, he had one goal that kept him determined that he would, that would, he kept, it was Eric's courageous fight and determination that would always remind us of the special person he was. Throughout Eric's battle with cancer, he had one goal that kept him determined to fight and win. That goal was to return to duty and assume his responsibilities as a sergeant on the night watch where he worked all of his career by choice. He was so proud and loved being a Key West police officer. I remember one day in the hospital, a doctor entered the room to examine him. At that time, Eric wasn't very cognizant because of the amount of pain medication he was under. The doctor asked Eric several questions and said, I heard you were a police officer. Eric quickly told him, I still am. His response to the doctor sent chills throughout my body. I was initially surprised that he was cognizant enough to watch, to catch the doctor's statement, but also surprised how quick he responded to him. I told Eric, that's right you are, Sergeant Biscop. It was at that moment that I truly realized and appreciated Eric's pride and love of being a Key West police officer. I understood his determination and stubborn fight for life. He was and always will be a Key West police officer. Ultimately, his body and mind wouldn't allow him to fight any longer. Eric was ready to begin his new assignment, walking a new beat in heaven and watching over us. Sergeant Eric Biscop's character and qualities have left a lasting impression on our lives and the Key West Police Department. It wasn't just his contributions as a great police officer or his charm or his sense of humor that we will remember. He was innovative and creative. In the late 1990s, he started the department's equestrian or mounted unit. He bought his own horse and equipment and began patrolling the streets when time allotted. 
Because of his vision, the mounted unit has grown and become a wonderful addition to our department and community policing initiatives. Whether it was creating poems, patches, and coins, or designing the graphics on our police cars, which we continue to use today, Eric was always finding ways to improve our image and our professionalism. Eric was a loving family man as well. To his son Tyler, his sister Krista, his nephews Kurt and Alex, to his fiance Laura, and to all his family. On behalf of the city of Key West and all of the members of the Key West Police Department, I would like to express our condolences to you. I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to mention and thank all those members, past and present, of the Key West Police Department and other law enforcement agencies who cared for and assisted Eric during his battle against cancer. I am so proud to be associated with such loving and caring individuals. I would also like to thank his family and his friends who cared for him and accompanied him through his illness. You all made Eric feel loved and gave him a reason to fight. Last week, I was looking through Eric's personnel file and reading through the many commendations and letters of appreciation he received throughout his career with our department. I came across a letter that day that a lady wrote in October of 1999 that I'd like to share with you. Dear Chief Dillon, I want to take a moment to write to you regarding my recent experience with the Key West Police Department. I was on vacation and due to an unfortunate and certainly embarrassing incident, I had the opportunity to visit your facility. I cannot tell you the name of the first officer I encountered as he was completely forgettable due to his offensive nature. However, the second officer, Officer E.M. Biscop, that displayed exemplary behavior. He was sympathetic, understanding, and caring while maintaining his professionalism. He treated me with dignity and respect and made me feel safe and secure. I cannot emphasize enough how Officer Biscop made my experience as positive as it could be. He is the type of officer your people should look to as a model for excellence. You are fortunate to have him as a member of your department. He is truly an angel in uniform. Sincerely, Janet Passarelli. Sergeant Biscop, you are an angel in uniform. May you continue to protect us and serve from heaven, and may you rest in peace.
Dear 18, come on. Sierra 18, Palm 1. Sierra 18, Palm 1. Sierra 18, Sergeant Biscop, Palm 1. Palm 1 to all police, fire and rescue. CR-18, Sergeant Eric Biscop, is 10-7, January 9th, 2016, rest in peace.